Hello, Paul from Click and Turn here again. Still sunny. Anyway, this week's project, I think I might have to show you. Stand by, you know it's going to be a resin. Here we go. Into the lathe cave. This, my friends, is going to be a project. It's a root from my mother's back garden. Don't ask me what it is, because she didn't even know. Well, it's not quite the root, it's the very bottom of. So we know we're going to find stones, rotten wood. That looks like it's going to fly off any moment. Uh, plenty of mud, so we're going to do some turning it down to try and make it fit one of my pots. And we're going to do some bark cleaning off. Oh, drop the camera there a little bit too low, didn't I? But that doesn't look like it's going to be a problem getting the park off. Coming off of its own accord. Good stiff wire brush. That'll be that. Anyway, let's get on with it. Righto, let's give it a cleaning up. This could take a while. I'll bring you back when I've got a bit closer. Well, one thing's for sure, it's, uh, it's a bit freer of bark now, couldn't find any stones, and I poked and prodded with the sharp drill um, thing, <coughs> one of these things, and uh, cleaned it all out, now we're covered in dust, and my filter's clogged, Anyway, that's another story. Let's see if we can turn it down to fit one Mackey's of Scotland tub. Because you save all your tubs from your house for just such occasions. Well, even before I got going, I hadn't noticed that it's only held on by a net. What's it? So whether I go for the glue up, cleaning it out obviously first, uh, and then go to turn it round and then re-resin it, or just clean it up and stick it in the pot, the best way it can fit. I think probably the latter is the safest. Well, that was fun. I finally managed to get it to fit. Oh, minus that bit. So um, I've glued in a couple of extra bits just to fill some voids. Like little clamshells or whatever sitting on a lump of coral, don't it? <laughs> anyway, that's in there. All we got to do is fill it with some resin. Righto, today we're using J Diction resin. Not sponsored by them. Just it was cheap enough. So I bought it. Simple as that. No science in it, I'm afraid. So part A, this is one to one by volume rather than by weight. So I don't know. Let's make up so one litre pot and at least half of it is wood, so let's go with four hundred mil to start with. So two hundred part A. And 200 part B. For those of you in the Americas, I have no idea what 200 mil is. I suppose I might be able to tell you if I spin the pot around in just a second. Uh, nope, that was useful, wasn't it? Uh, and here comes part B. Suppose we have to ask ourselves the question: What colour do we want it? You see, I do like the purple finish. I think it has lots of luster. If that's the right word. We've got some inks as well. 
all manner of inks. Right, I've decided to make this as gaudy as possible. So we're going for mango as a base colour. Get a good blob in there. You know my saying, the bigger the blob, the better the job. Let's see what that looks like. Wow, that's disgusting. All right, here we go. That's the um, today's dose. The most least scientific approach. Oh, look at that. It actually looks like engine oil with purple dye in it. That's pretty revolting, isn't it? We'll enjoy this one. That's what colour the offshoot is. Well, here we are. This is where we find out if 400 mil was enough. Are you ready? Well, it's creeping up the sides. Not sure if I'll be able to match that colour again. Not that it matters. I think we're going to do all right. That's Luna, the mangy cat. Now. We have docked. Now then, which way's off? That way. Contact. Not good. Better. See you sometime soon. Well, here we are after a week because I've been up to Derbyshire in between pouring this and setting it and this, that, and the other. So, colour looks alright. Let's see how it comes out. As it happens, there wasn't a lot of struggling involved. Well, not so far anyway. all right anyway my bands all broke so that was fun manual soaring did he right over I found centers with a good old-fashioned center finder and there we are that black blob there and that blob there which actually is the centre of the pot. So anyway, I'm going to mount it this way so that I can do the do the foot and then we'll go on from there. My manky old carbide tool with a uh, recently sharpened tip though it looks like it's in desperate need of changing but never mind we'll do that later this is what a thousand rpm looks like Square the bottom off. So that's the 
that's my tenon done. Let's just give it a little bit of an angle, or dovetail, should we call it. Now, the shape. What shape should we have? I think a slightly more rounded bottom and a small flute, perhaps. is indicative of when you're getting too greedy so I'm just roughing out at the moment but you need to cut lighter if you don't want tear out or chip out or flying resin bullets whatever you want to call it anyway so as I'm still roughing at the moment we're doing all right So this little bit here is soft and punky, so I'm just going to give it a good liberal dousing with some uh, sanding sealer just to hopefully, actually no, I'm going to use shellac, yeah why not, I think that will penetrate nicely. Got my little painty sticks, which will swell up to a silly size with all this stuff in it, but ah, I forgot. Gonna get shellac all over the place. Righto, let's let that dry. Gonna use a bit of AD grit to knock it back for the first. Righto, well here we are. Too shabby, does it? Nice. But I think what we do is we'll give it a bit of true grit first, and then we'll flip it over and uh, deal with the top and the hole. Good idea. Ooh, true grit. Okay. Okie dokie. Let's take the top down. <laughs> Righto, I'm going to take a force and a bit to that and make a hole. I'm not going to hollow this bit because it's a small vase and we want some weight to stop it tipping over at the bottom so I'm just going to make a straight hole through the middle of it and hopefully that will retain its stability 
So that neck is, in technical terms, 45 millimeters wide. I don't know if you can see that or not. So I'm going to put a much smaller force a bit through it. <laughs> with a 35 millimeter force and a bit turn the speed down to 500 rpm and here we go right oh let's do some shaping down a bit lower. Um, well, this is letting the shallot go off. Unfortunately, the Nova can only go down to 100 RPM. It's a shame. 50 RPM would be lovely. I have seen cheats for Nova DVR to take them down to 50 RPM, but or service codes should we call them um, but they don't seem to work on my version of the Nova DVR Saturn so if anyone knows one please comment below I'd love to know what it is this is the version of the Nova DVR I have it has this funny little panel all the ones with the cheat codes service codes that I've seen uh, have a slightly different panel to that anyway I did a little bit more sanding and finished the inside nicely fast that's more like it now just giving it a quick wipe down with some methylated spirits spirits I don't mean to spirits perhaps uh, get it nice and clean and then we'll flip it around get rid of the tenon and then perhaps give it a blast of some polyurethane I've sealed it twice with uh, shellac so hopefully the polyurethane won't seep, seep too much into the the wood that'll be a pain in the body anyway I've got a jam chuck but it makes a peculiar noise I've heard it before I don't know what does it if you know, comment below. So I've got the pot sitting on this, which is roughly smaller. I'm just going to put a little bead of glue gun in the middle. So let's just let that glue gun go a little bit stiff and then we'll get back to it. Alright, time to let that go away. I mean, go off. Not go away. I don't want it to go away. Well, here we are. Another project done. Um, 
took a long time because I had to go to Derbyshire in between so um, anyway the resin was good and set. Well this is the end result, one little pot with some resin, I quite like it, nice if I can get a picture of it without my finger in it, or shadow anyway, yeah alright not bad at all. If you've enjoyed it please like and subscribe as usual and um, see if we can get me over the 300 mark. I don't know, still talking those heady numbers. I'd like to thank those people who have left comments and likes, it's very kind of you. Uh, appreciate you watching the videos and taking time to uh, well, hopefully enjoy them, if not laugh along with me. I can't actually see much because my glasses are filthy dirty and I'm staring into the sun. Oh well, never mind. Here's a few stills of the little pot.